I thought a big win for you, an important win for you. Uh, now biting really went down to the last few minutes. David, uh, what did you make of it tonight for your boys? That was no different to Sunday. The ex- it was no the different. exact same game as Sunday. The only difference is the result. That is it. And when Jackson missed that absolute sitter, I was get- I was waiting to come on and hear people complain about Poch because that that's that's what I expect now. No matter what happens in the game, um, team was set up pretty well. They played okay. Not great, like for most of the game. Repeat what I said on Sunday, but we won. Yay. I disagree <laughs> with you, you know. I genuinely I think the first half, I agree with you. There were so many opportunities. Matson and one on one, Mudrick one on one, and Kunku one on one. We've like we missed clear cut opportunities, some good football. Second half, I think Posh is subs again, like in game management. <laughs> it, it wasn't right. You take off your best player in Gusto from that first half and put him onto the left-hand side to basically have a right-footed at left-back so you have no threat down that side. You put the Sassy at right-back. And then you wonder why we're not creating anything and lost the impetus that we had. He was, for me, he's scared to take off the experienced players because he doesn't like playing youth. And which is hilarious because the whole remit at this club right now is play youth and mm. like... And you're seeing this by his decisions. He literally will do anything but not to play Matson in his right, rightful position. And mm-hmm. Matson is a right winger, so we can't be overly critical. I do think we need to talk about Jackson's treatment by the Chelsea fans. I genuinely think it's bang out of order what's happening. Purely based on the fact every touch, every pass backwards, the fans were groaning. The fans were publicly like, you can hear it on the TV clear, clear as day. It needs yeah. to stop because I reckon every time it goes through one-on-one now, it's, it's I don't want to miss rather than how am I going to score this? And this that has a factor for a 22-year-old kid. He's not yeah. a seasoned vet. And I think it's it's ridiculously unfair when I think overall he had a good game today. Link-up play was amazing in that first half. He scored a goal that was just, just marginally offside. Yes, he missed an, a one-on-one, but it's a 22-year-old track. What do you expect from him? Yeah, I agree. That was my that was my my problem. All the things that of the two positions they neglected in the summer, the goalkeeper and the striker, Jackson should not be leading the line by himself. He's just not. He should be here or there and coming on. And you're right. First half, I thought he linked up very well. I thought they all linked up very well um, after the first like initial few minutes, and then obviously right at the end. I just don't know what he says to them at half time because they came out looking like they were down four nil. They really played slowly as well. Again. Very slow, pass side to side, not anything. Like you said, for about 15 minutes, he sacrificed our right hand side by taking off, uh, by putting Desassi there. And he knows it's not going to happen. And it's like, I thought all of the defenders, apart from Gusto, were trash tonight. I thought they were at, I thought they were very bad. And this experiment of Cole again at left back has to stop. It has to stop because it's just ruining him as a player overall. And that's why I do blame Poch, because he continues to do this and it doesn't work at all. I don't know how many times someone, I don't know what he sees in training to, or on the or 18 game or 20 games now that Cole has played left back that goes, yeah, I know he's going to get in this left back role really well. I know he's going to really do well. But I will say this, it's a stonewall penalty. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, I'm glad VR oh. there and done its job because if VR wasn't there, they wouldn't have been given yeah, I mean, I mean it, yeah, without a doubt, a stonewall penalty. I mean, he could have actually a little his bit leg more went force. in his knee, his knee actually a little bit more force in. on his yeah. knee, and his knee could have dislocated yeah. or worse. Yeah. I, I wanted to go back to the Nicholas Jackson stuff, and I say that because every single one of our clubs now have members of Standards FC, where the standards, no matter how big your club is, no matter where your club is situation wise, the standards are always delivered. Of you've got to be R nine. All your shit, but like that's almost right. If you're yeah. not in Bap- if you're a youngster and you're not in Bappe, you shit. You know what yeah. I mean? If you're number 10, you can't do what Messi did, you shit. And I don't want to know about you. Not every football player is going to develop under the noise of boos and jeers, which is why I've been very man United fans. I think the majority have got right behind Rasmus Hoyland because I think they know there is a player in him and they think, right, we're going to support him through these bad times. Uh, David, do you understand where where Alex is coming from when he speaks about the the added pressure that Chelsea fans are putting upon Jackson? And do you think that's actually going to help him develop? 
Um, it won't help him develop. I get the frustration. I don't think he was that good, personally. Um, but I'm but I'm not at the game, so it's different. I can shout at my TV all I want. He can't hear me. Um, but if you're at the game, I think it, you should be a bit different in terms of get behind the team for the 90 minutes. And if you've got complaints, do it when you get outside or whatever, because, you know, I just think it's just better for the whole atmosphere. But he, he I think he does need to improve because he is just, yeah. yeah, I get you're young and, you know, he's, his whole career is ahead of him and everything. But he is missing crucial chances for us or making crucial decisions. Even like the amount of yellows he has, that's crucial yeah. to our season because he's get he's get he's getting to the point now where he's almost at eight. 10 yellow cards. And he's going to miss two games. And are we going to have enough players to even fill up his position? Maybe, maybe not. We don't know what's going on right now with our fitness thing. So he's young. So, you know, I give him a bit of, you know, whatever, like a, a bit of a layoff, but he does, out of all of our young players, he, he for me is the one where I'm looking at him going, you're, you're, there's something there, but I don't see it enough. Like Mudrick, I see, I see it a lot, but he doesn't do it in a way where it's like, it's consistent enough for it to, consistently be goals every game but I see it every game whereas Jackson will have games where I don't see it at all and then he'll have games like today where it's like he'll run through and he'll do really good things and then he'll miss the chance unfortunately we have so many of those players not all of them are going to last so you've got to really put yourself in a position to be like I've done this over this amount of games you know however the weird thing is though even though considering how he's played he has seven goals I don't know how he's managed that of, of not, everything, of everything I've said about him, because me personally, I'm really starting to like have an issue with the way he's playing. He's got seven, eight goals. I don't know how he's done it. But you know what I think is like very interesting from what you said. I reckon his finishing is the worst part of his game, and that's really worrying when you're a number nine, because his ability to, for example. The back flick in a link-up play when a defender's up against him to send Mudrick through for a one-on-one that he tried to chip didn't work out. He holds the ball up against Anderson and Gwehi attracts them both in, gets Anderson onto the floor, opens it up and sends Nkunku through. All this stuff, the link-up play, is what you expect from players at the age of 26, 27. By no means am I saying he's good enough to start for us. But the way people are acting is like he is a bust. Like, literally, like, he's the worst player to have ever put on a Chelsea T-shirt. He's the worst player to ever play football in the Premier League. There's rhetoric, like, is he even a championship player? Which is crazy. When you look at some of the players he's outscored this year and his all-round performances in some games, it's genuinely, like, it's revisionism of performances purely based on the fact that he misses a one-on-one. He's not prolific. And people in the comments are saying he's tw- 22, that's not a kid. Go and look at when strikers bang. All of you now are begging for Solanke at Arsenal. When Solanke was 22, he was bench warming and getting reserve minutes for Liverpool most probably, or going down to the championship at Bournemouth. You want these players when they turn good and competent enough to be regular starters. We don't want this player to develop. It's not his fault he's been given a job of a senior partner at firm when he's meant to be a graduate, like, <laughs> I like that. yeah, like, I, th- <coughs> I think there's, there's there's a happy medium. I look, I understand and get some clubs. You know, we, we know Real Madrid fans get on at their players and they're very aggressive with them when things don't go right. But I think you understand that going in as a a, a Real Madrid player, Chelsea are not Real Madrid, and in my opinion, Chelsea mm. will never be Real Madrid. So you don't have to do. Th- it's almost one of those things of. Yes, you could argue if everybody behaved like them, they could be like them. But I don't think life works that way, does it? Do you know what I mean? You, you, you know, just because you know you could buy a, you know, a, a, a fire, you know, back in the eighties, if you bought a, a, an aluminium briefcase and wore red braces, it didn't make you a chairman of the board. You still had to actually be able. You know what I mean? It, it didn't necessarily mean you were going to be something. But I tell you, I would get... cat. Some players. I'm not saying you guys shouldn't be criticizing him because I criticize Rashmus Hoyland, but I also supported him in the areas I didn't think were necessarily his fault. So the lack of right. the fact that Rasmus Hoyland received less passes to him as a player, less attempts at through balls to him as a player than any other number nine in the Premier League spoke volumes to me. So the way some people were going in on him, I felt was really unfair. 
And the fact as well, by the way, he got his first goal yesterday. Yeah, it was his sixth goal of the season, by the way, which is not... It'll make it sound like he hasn't scored a single goal. I think with Jackson, there's lots of areas in his game that need to improve. At the same time, I think your, your club's squad building, as in the amount of young players, the lack of experience in your team, is leading to a, a number of your individuals not being maybe as consistent as they could be if they were surrounded by more elder statesmen. You know, how much better would would Mudrik have been, in my opinion, if he'd have gone to Arsenal, who were in a much more secure position as a club? I think you'd have seen him excel, in my personal opinion, a lot sooner. You guys have got so much raw, untested, undeveloped talent, immature talent in your team. It's very hard to get them to work together. That's why you have moments where your football is beautiful, like your first goal, to, goal today. The, the, the pirouette from Gusto, the great play by the edge of the box. The, the, you know, even the finish from Mudrik was great. Um, first of all, I thought there was a problem, like it wasn't a goal or something. The way he <laughs> I thought he was offside. Yeah, I, I, so did I. I, thought, you know, I thought something like that. But that's, yeah. you guys have that in you. But to do that consistently when you have so many, not just young, but raw players, is very, very difficult indeed. So I do, I do feel that treating them like you guys are peak Real Madrid and booing and having a yeah. go at them, I just don't see that benefit in you as much as standard FC tell you it's going to. No, I don't understand. And Standard FC is an interesting narrative right now, right? I love Lee's content and I actually really enjoy listening to him. But it really shows how influential some of us YouTubers can be once the platform is big enough. Because Lee's been shouting this for three years and now every single YouTuber all of a sudden wants to, and anyone that has an opinion on social media wants to say, oh, Standard FC, Standard FC. Like, unless you, literally you're perfect, you're not good enough for the club. No, like, but I just it's find really, it... it's not even stand... sorry. Go on, go on, go on. Uh, uh, Andy, I just sorry, find but... Chelsea fans saying standard F FC when we haven't been in a title race since we won it for seven years is just funny. Yeah, it's just funny to me. Just and and no is, sense. the thing is, someone here no says sense. Terry's just waffling now. Listen, I understand that you you might be part, but you, you remember, I respect you. But this is what I'm saying: the standards they have are not the issue. It's how they think the standards should be uh, actioned or the reaction to people not meeting those standards. That's more how, what I have. How, how, how does your club in its current position achieve the standard you want it to do? But I feel like the way football fans now are, yeah. they, don't, they don't think about the process. They just think, how do I get yeah, from point eight? I think, I think it's the TikTok generation. You know, there was Deontay Wilder was a heavyweight boxing champion. He was, he's a very good boxing boxer, but he was never the elite end of the sport. All the really good fighters that he's fought have beaten him. He's only fought two, really. Um, Parker even beat him at the weekend, right? But he always says this thing, and people used to repeat it, and it goes like it was something like "see it, say it, believe it." And if you say it and you speak it into existence, it will work. And I always laugh at sayings like that. You can talk something about something as much as you want. You can demand the be biggest and the best, but unless you do something tangible, you're never going to achieve it. You know that, David. What you're doing in your life right now? If you sat in the mirror every day saying you were going to achieve what you're doing, but you never did anything about it, your standards are irrelevant. And that's kind of my issue with a lot of this. It's a lot of I'm going to hold my club to account and we've got to behave like Real Madrid or we've got to behave like Man City do right now. The problem is Man City were not behaving like Man City in 2023, 10 years ago, when they were nowhere near that level. Real Madrid, I'd have to do a bit more digging into the history. They have been at the top and maintained it for generations. So right, they yeah. can hold that standard. But if Real Madrid dropped off for whatever reason, so the money falls out of the league and they dropped off and they didn't win a title for... 10 years, had them in the Champions League for five years, and then they started to develop a team that could look good. I guarantee you the majority of their fans wouldn't treat that new group, okay, how they treat the current uh, Real Madrid team when it fails, because the standards would have to be lowered for a period of time. They booed Ronaldo. They standard. booed Ronaldo in the Bernabeu. They booed him. His record well, I understand that they, because they've, know, they've, they've, I mean. they've, main, they've maintained that standard the whole time. Yeah. You know, and this is what me and Lee fight about this a lot. And I don't disagree with a lot of Lee's standards. I just think to myself, I'm, if you're not at Real Madrid's level, you can't apply all those standards and practices behind them every single day until you get but to if that level. you don't level. rate the players, how do you, how do you, because Real Madrid are only booing them. because they got to that level. Real Madrid yeah. fans weren't waving white flags before they were one of the best teams in the world. <laughs> they weren't doing it. <laughs> they had to get to that level so they could rave the flags. Yeah. And I just sometimes think that little bit in the middle is kind of missing. And it is not to say the standards are wrong, but I don't believe turning around to Nicholas Jackson and saying, look, come on, you, you can do this. I don't believe that's lowering the standards. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe supporting him <laughs> and encouraging him is going to ruin your club. 
I, I, I would just do. like him to. I would just like him to look across the line more before he runs. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he's you see, that can be taught though. That can be yeah. taught though. That's the, that, that's what I'm saying. He needs to learn that. It's like we need to put like a child reins on him to stop him going. And also, if Nkuku starts with him now, he doesn't need to drop that deep like he has been doing because Nkuku's there and stuff like that. So it, it can be taught. And I would say this, the last time Chelsea had a goal score of seven goals at this stage of the season was Tammy Abraham four years ago. Jeez. Do you know what I mean? So it's like the standards are not... That's what I keep saying. The Chelsea fans talk about standards. You have no idea what standards you're talking about. Mm. You just don't. You just and, and even the standard the conversation. It, yeah, it's it's, just, it's, it's the bogus. way they ignore this bogus. failure that you're at now. Yeah. I, I'm not. This whole. I didn't go into it much with Lisa. This whole how to ruin a club in 18 months. Pretending that you are where you are now solely because of Bowley and Clear Lake is intellectually dishonest. Champions yes. League covered a lot of cracks. Champions it, League. It, Champions, it, Champions, Champions League. League. I so much. I'll take it every time, though. I'll no, take it every time. Of course, of course you would, but it, it's this. I it, it really frustrates me the ignoring of the big the amount of Man United fans who every time a man I've criticised Ten Hag and rightfully so, but the amount of Man United fans that every time a manager struggles, they suddenly forget who the Glazers are, how we've operated, how we've been run, and don't want to talk about the bigger picture. It's crazy, and the fact that. Even with our new owners coming in, it's going to take us time to get back to. We may never get there. I hope we do. It's going to take time. We're not going to go from where we are to being Man United of old like this. It's crazy. No matter how much you demand it. But then again, you can't, you can't celebrate goals now either.